let's start with elementary stuff. If I am going to kill myself with my gun, then my fingerprints ought to be on my gun. Unless I'm wearing gloves, right? She wasn't wearing gloves. So her hand is on the gun if the military's position is correct. The forensic evidence doesn't have her fingerprints on the gun. All right, the next thing is so if official if forensic evidence, forensic evidence don't show that her, her fingerprints fin on the gun. The one that she, they said she used to kill herself. Okay. Everybody expects your fingerprints to be on the gun that you used to kill yourself because you don't have, you're dead. You can't wipe your fingerprints off. But let me, let, me, let me keep mentioning evidence, because I, I, this is not a he said, she said. This is what's in their records or not in their records. Mm -hmm. I didn't make up the crime scene records. I didn't take the photograph. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to fingerprints. Just one thing about fingerprints. Even though they didn't explain why her fingerprints were not on, on the weapon, the M16 that was found in the t inside of a tent next to her body, right? The first responder who went into the tent says that I moved the M16. So I go through all of the reports. I'm looking for the report that says his fingerprints are on the weapon. Because if you move the M16, I have no reason to doubt him. I moved the M16. Then his fingerprints should be on the weapon. There's, his fingerprints are not on the weapon either. What, the only logical explanation for why her fingerprints are not on the weapon. The first responder's fingerprints are not on the weapon. Is somebody wiped the weapon clean after the crime investigation started? The only way you could have this much evidence ignored or overlooked and sometimes just uh, tampered with is if this involves somebody really, really high in the chain of command. And so uh, that took me over next to the chain of command. Who's in the chain of command and who in that chain of command has problems? And so it didn't take long to find who was in the chain of command. I didn't even know about the notes that uh, Lavina Johnson had written down, her handwritten notes. I just shifted over who are the big dogs on that base and do any of them have problems? And so I did, I found one that was a, uh, a general and he had real problems, real problems. She was there for six weeks with no battle buddy. The 14th she called me, she was responsible. 14th of July, July. three days before she died. Right, mm -hmm. her responsibility was to open up the communications center in the mornings and then close it in the evenings. This particular day, the 14th, she called me and she said that previous day when she went to close the center, the soldiers wouldn't leave. So she said the general came in and ordered them out of there. Once they were out, he told her the reason they didn't leave is because your voice is too soft. When she told me that, I said, Lavina, listen, I don't like the way that sounds. I don't see why a general needs to be talking to a private. I said, but I need you to, you, you, you need to go to your company commander and tell him to assign you a battle buddy. You 19 years old, you running around there with all them horny men and stuff like that. I hope you understand you're in a vicarious position and I need you to, to take care of yourself. She said, dad, I can't go to my officers and tell them to, to assign me a battle buddy. I said, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to Lacey Clay because you should not be in Iraq without a battle buddy. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that in time enough, she was dead. Then also, we sent her personal effects home and she's got a chain of command that she wrote out. At the top of the list is a general that became suspect number one. And so we investigated him. Is that general still suspect number one? Yes. In your extensive research, the person that she had at the top of her command. Yes. You're saying to this day is suspect number one. I'm saying that the evidence, all of it, plus the totality of circumstances, because there are circumstances beyond what happened on that military base, mm -hmm. lead directly to him. Our research team did come up with an article about 
an individual mm -hmm. that Ariana Huffington wrote in the Huffington Post. Three weeks after the murder of Bradford Johnson. In a rare, in a rare act. For so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, I, then I, so I have to ask you the question this way. Go ahead. We know the name of that person, of the person that uh, was, was there that evening. Mm -hmm. 